Thank you for joining us today on our webinar, End of Semester Checklist. My name is Paul Lynch, and joining me today are Lisa Kidder, Ryan Randall, and Mark Cooper. In this webinar, we're going to discuss what you can do with your grades, how you can manage your course content, and ways you can make adjustments to your course in between semesters. So first, looking at grades. We want to make sure we are reviewing our gradebook. Specifically, does everything look correct? As you're reviewing your gradebook, you may also notice that there could be some missing grades. Maybe there's like a lingering assignment we missed that we forgot to grade, or maybe there's just some assignments that weren't submitted. We just want to make sure we're addressing those, so making sure we're grading any late submissions, if you accept those, or any missing items. We just want to make sure the zeros are entered in the gradebook for, for those. And then after we've completed our gradebook in our course, we want to make sure we take those grades and enter them in to my ISU. And then a bonus item, as you're going through your gradebook, if you notice some things that you'd like to change, I'd recommend finding a safe place to keep those notes because sometimes if we try to remember those things, we may forget those and they could have been really helpful changes. So just make sure to write those down. Next, Lisa's gonna cover how we can back up course content. And this would include things to consider when backing up things like student data. At the end of the semester is a perfect time to think about your digital filing cabinet. We live in a world where it's easy to save and keep lots of digital stuff. So at the end of the semester, it's a good time to look and see what you have collected so that you can keep a copy of the course and you can restore or import an older course if needed. And it's something that you can reference and look back in. Previously, before all the digital influx, at the end of a semester, faculty would create a physical filing cabinet. So we encourage you to really look at the end of the semester of keeping your digital filing cabinet organized and cohesive and concise. So let's look at what kind of things that you can make sure that you back up and retain so that this puts you in charge of your content and keeps you as the owner. First, I'm gonna talk about content and instructional materials and things that doesn't include student data. Your syllabus. Your syllabus is something that's used in a lot of different places, accreditation, program reviews, all sorts of things. So this is something that you definitely want to keep a hold of and keep it in a place that is accessible. It also makes it easy for you to update the syllabus for the next semester. Your whole entire course that is in the learning management system. You can create a backup and then you can download that into your computer so that you have a copy of it. Please note that when you do this, it creates a zipped file that is good for future importing into a learning management system. It's not so easy to open and dissect and look at and access that way. Because of that, you may want to export your question bank separately. You may want to review your questions, make some updates. And so you, it is possible to export questions in a way that you can read them and access them, fix them, update them, and then re-import them into your course. Specific assignments, instructions, and rubrics. Some of your key projects or major assignments, you finesse those instructions and the rubrics, and you need those separate from your whole course backup. It's possible to keep a track of these. Here's some ways that you might want to consider doing that. You could keep an ongoing Google Doc or Word Doc that has the whole entire assignment there. The instructions, notes, tips, the rubric, greeting comments, things that help you remember what this assignment is. You might want to do this also for common activities. So if you have the same instructions for all of your forums and you use the same rubric across all of your forums, you might want to keep an ongoing document that has those instructions so that you can quickly access it whenever you need to, whether or not you have access to a previous course. Definitely, I would encourage this for any signature assignments. Signature assignments are those assignments that tie into a program assessment, accreditation, and those types of things. So having those signature assignments that you can 
use with peer and discuss them and go in deeper, having them in a format like a continuing Word document or Google Doc makes it so that you can easily share, discuss, and update those. Now let's talk about student data. Before we go into student data, I do have to alert you that you need to follow FERPA policies and guidelines. With FERPA policies and guidelines, basically you can't share information about a student in a class with those who are not authorized to know. This could be include parents, this is like you don't share grades with another student. So there are some people that are authorized. So your department chair would have access to that information, but the department chair of another department would not. Need to be careful as with student data that you are abiding by policies related to the FERPA guidelines, which is a federal law, and the ISU specific policies, which you can find online. Knowing that, what kind of student data would you? Uh, Paul mentioned this gradebook. You might want to export your final gradebook in that spreadsheet form just as a reference, and that includes the student name and their grades on each assignment. Um, again, you don't need to keep it forever, but you may want to keep it for a little bit. Signature and key assessments. As I mentioned, some of those signature and key assessments are used in programmatic or accreditation purposes, and you may need to export them in a way that has the student data information with them. It is possible to do that. You also might want to export some project examples. It is a good practice and a good teaching strategy to provide examples for students. If you do this, you can ask student permission for using their work. Generally, it's good practice to make it anonymous, and then you can share it as an example for future students, and they can better understand the expectations for those key assessments and signature assignments. Another reason that you might want to keep your content with student data is for student issues or challenges. So you may want to keep certain student data related items related to a specific student. Please note that you do still have access to your courses and your student data for a specific amount of time. So you don't necessarily need to export things from the learning management system immediately to make sure you hold it all, but it is important to be aware of archive policies, which Ryan is going to talk about next. Great, thanks Lisa. ISU does of course have archive policies and instead of saying the specific numbers, since we all know that occasionally those numbers will change on us, I have included an image on the right of the archive policies that we maintain and update whenever there are changes. We of course will also let the entire campus community know when there are changes coming as soon as we are aware. Some of the ones that you might want to keep track of for yourself, because they do all vary by platform. Some of the ones you might want to think about, in addition to what Lisa has said about your course specifically, would be any other tools that you use in the course. So for instance, if you know that you use a lot of Zoom recordings, think about how long those are going to be available to you and whether or not you'll want to make backups for yourself to export, to have somewhere that you can control. Similarly, with our new video system, Panopto, you'll want to know what the policies are with that, how long it will remain there live and available versus when you'll want to have a copy of your own on a device that you control. And anything that you use from a publisher or any sort of other resource, those things, um, those can vary widely. So please make sure of how long you'll be able to retain access to those and the ways that you may or may not be able to reuse them after the fact. So these are all really good things to investigate and perhaps also write down in those documents Lisa had mentioned of notes to yourself so that, okay, these are the things I need to do either right now at the end of every semester or as soon as I get a chance, get into some sort of routine that works for you. So up next, Mark will tell us more about reflecting and planning for future semesters. Thank you, Brian. As the semester draws to a close, it's an opportune moment for you to reflect on your course's performance, identifying the key strengths 
and areas of improvement. So I'm gonna talk about some suggestions that will guide your reflection and planning. So the first one is an alignment map. And you wanna consider either developing an alignment map or if you already have an alignment map, using that to visually assess how each component in your course aligns with the learning objectives. And utilize that alignment map to make any notes of areas that you want to adjust or enhance in your course. It's a living, breathing document that you can continue to use for your continuous improvement efforts. We also have some other resources, and we invite you to explore templates provided by the ITRC for streamlining your course planning and frameworks for streamlining your course design. And these include a syllabus template that we have developed, as well as ISU branded frameworks. And these resources are available on, on the ISU Quality Plus website, and that, that information will be in the notes for this video. We also have some other training options that are available for you to utilize over the semester break to enhance your expertise. And these opportunities could include completing the Canvas Essentials training course, participating in a Quality Matters professional development course, or attending one of our regularly scheduled Zoom sessions that we hold every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday for any additional support or insights that you might need. So by engaging with these recommendations, you can refine your course design and instructional strategies, ultimately enhancing the learning experience for your students. If you would like to learn more about this exciting topic and other topics that we've done in the past, we invite you to, first of all, check out our list of Tiger Tracks articles. These are how-to guides at your fingertips. We also have a library of videos and recordings similar to today's session here in our ITRC video library on YouTube. And we also have accessibility resources available on the Instructional Technology Resource Center's website for you to visit for more information. You're welcome to meet with the ITRC and you can do that simply by sending us an email or giving us a call at 208-282-5880. Feel free to stop down at the ISU library. We are in the basement in room B17 on the Pocatello ISU campus. And you're also welcome to schedule a one-on-one -on -one appointment with any of our full-time staff. And you can do that by Zoom, by phone, or meet with us in person. And then finally, we want to thank you for joining our final webinar of the spring semester. We will be returning with our webinars in the fall. Stay tuned over the summer months for any updates in regards to training and support related to the Canvas transition. When we do return for the fall, keep an eye out for our ITRC um, webinar announcements in the ISU Today and the ISU Events Calendar. The Wednesday webinar schedule um, will now link out to any webinar events um, that are recorded from the spring semester. So you're welcome to access those. Um, and um, if you would like to access the links on this slide, um, you can do so by clicking on the link in the notes section of this video. We want to thank you so much for joining us today and good luck with the rest of your spring semester. Thank you.